Hey guys, we're talking about Dover this weekend, both the Cup Series and the Expanding Series. Now before I truly start, have you watched this hour-long video yet? Yes? Okay, that's good. Have you watched this video reviewing Texas? Yes? Good. All right then. If you haven't, those need to be watched first. Otherwise, we're going to have things, you're going to have questions about things that aren't answered that we talk about specifically in these two videos. So that's an hour and 45 minutes you got to catch up on. Uh, so when we look at Dover and how it proceeds and how it races and et cetera, et cetera, yada, 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 I'm personally not using the Texas data for everything stated in the previous two videos. Um, just moving it to a situation where looking at recent form at Texas, I would be influencing the data too much. Um, when we look at the two runs that were usable in Texas, uh, it's still, you know, a lot of these, a lot of the drivers were breaking up, specifically when it comes to like Kyle Busch or people like in mid-pack, uh, people who stayed out uh, at, certain, at certain stages in the race to gain track position that they didn't necessarily uh, give up past that, but they didn't have the car to get there. So like if I was moving any data point to this from Texas, I would have too much of my own like greasy fingers in there. And I, I personally don't enjoy having this data point be influenced by uh, anything that I see or my biases. I want this to be very much just the points I pull and stuff. So I'm not using, well, we're not going to be using text data. Um, we're, we're not going to be using data from the Texas race this year. Uh, that's just where I'm at. When we look at Dover and we look at a racetrack that is going to provide good racing. Now, this is all very, uh, just my opinion and stuff. I love Dover. It is my favorite track. Not in a sense of we can flip things at Talladega because I love I love Wreckfest. I I love the aesthetic of Dover. Like I'm ashamed. I'm very sad that it only has one uh, race now. Regardless of how boring it is, I think this would be a fantastic place to be as a race car driver and as a fan to watch because uh, it's real racing. Uh, we're gonna see. We're not gonna see a lot of yellows. We're gonna see uh, a big discrepancy in terms of speed between the pack. Like there, I mean there there are showers and no showers here. I mean this is very much you will have speed or you will not have speed. You will be a top ten car in these races and you will be top ten in Dover or you will not. You are gonna be right where you deserve to be at. Dover is very brutal in that sense. We're gonna have a lot of cars a lap down. Dover is a track that we have a lot of people go a lap down because because Dover is so difficult. Uh, we have, you know, a huge spread out in speed between the pack. We're going to have situations to where back the field gets lapped. You know, you know, six, seven, eight cars get lapped. We have a yellow. We go back green. Whoever the leader is, it might not even be the same person, goes back, laps the field again. This time they lap uh, nine cars. Well, that means, you know, with the one guy getting the wave around, there's six guys a lap down. Those guys are now two laps down, and then we've lapped three other people they're now at one lap down and so that's a cycle that continues and so we'll have a lot of people a lap down a lot of people numerous laps down so we're basically multi-class racing here at dover if you look at it that way if that makes more sense to you and so when we're building a race like that and we're aiming for the end of this race to have anywhere from 11 to 15 16 people left on lead lap you know that makes it very difficult for bad plays or slow drivers or teams that start in the back or teams that just don't have speed to get through the field. Very limited place differential uh, priority in this race. It also shows that the places that we want to be aggressive at is trying to nail as many lap leaders as possible because not only are we going to have very limited people on the lead lap in this race, we're going to also have very limited uh, people who can actually get to the lead at this point. This is a race to where... If you are running first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, the lead is going to be swapped between those individuals. Those are the people who have the highest likelihood of, of swap and lead. Due to the fact that pit road is so slow, it's 35 mile per pit lane, you very rarely have somebody go from 11th, 12th, 10th, 9th. They take two tires or just have a fast pit stall or pit stop and go from 10th to, to third or 10th to second or whatever. It's, it's very uh, minimal gains on pit road. Uh, I'm not saying it doesn't happen there. It'll certainly be swapped between like the top six guys on pit lane, but you're not going to go from anywhere farther back from six to the lead. And so, yes, pit road is always important here, but it's very much condensed on the people who will be uh, up front. Okay, and so when we're looking at that, it look, it's the same people. As I said, watch the other videos and it explains why, but we're looking at people like Larson, William Byron, Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr., um, Ross Chastain, Ryan Blaney, um, and Christopher Bell, like it's it's the same guys we're going to be up there. And in a race like this, I want to play as many of those people as possible. And so when we're looking at salary this weekend for the Cup Series specifically, you might see you know a lot of eleven thousand guys, uh, a lot of ten k guys. That's not a concern at all for me, especially when you're in a sense of 
I'm, you know, we'll just use Larson, Byron, and like Bell for an example. And even Chastain has shown speed here. But uh, last year, the two best cars were uh, William Byron and Kyle Larson. I, I'm going to find it very difficult uh, for us to see a situation where that is not the case. Uh, you got to remember that Larson had the best car, able to fly through the field, and he just gets taken out by Ross Chastain. Uh, so, like, when you're looking at William Byron, Larson, and Bell, for example, here, leaves just $5,600 on average, very easy to fill out that lineup. Um, and especially in a situation if we get a place to where, you know, Elliott has shown good speed in practice and is qualifying up front, you know, Bowman, Kyle Busch, Joseph Logano, Ty Gibbs, like, these, these are a situation where I want to prioritize two 10K guys, like two favorites entering, and I will very much 1v1 a, a build with three 10K guys or um, two 10K guys or two 10K plus guys, and then playing whoever is qualifying up front or uh, is showing good speed and practice and in this type of stuff who's in the 9 and 8K range. Uh, we are just prioritizing trying to get as many potential lap leaders as possible here. Um, in this race and past that I frankly don't give a shit who I'm filling out the rest of the lineup with um, I'm very much not playing or not very interested in a lot of these mid-tier guys for example when we start looking at and we'll just look at kind of this year uh, we'll just look at actually we'll just look at the end of last year into uh, Las Vegas and we're seeing that like or actually we'll, we'll go down to Vegas since it is uh, up to date also remember that uh, Eric Jones has a little ouchy. He's like, I can't race. My back hurts. I can't race. Corey Heim, please hop into my car. So, like, Corey Heim, poor bastard, is hopping on the most difficult track. This is, like, unplayable for Corey Heim, so we're not even... Can't even play him. I mean, this is... This, also, this car is horrific for a track like... I love Dover, but, like, this is, this is a track... This is, that is not designed for this car at all. Like this is a track to where if you are bottoming out, if you are not having a good time, your car is coming up the track. You're not flying into the wall, but you enter turn one or turn three, your car kind of stances down. It sits down. You bottom out or you don't got anything right in the rear end. Like you are not set up correctly. You're just going to fucking jump up and like, just keep bottoming out and heading up the track. Like this is a disastrous place for Corey Heim to start his first, um, race in the next gen car. But like we have very much Larson going to be there competing, you know, Reddick, if they qualify as well, if he's up front, very similar to Texas, that's a situation where we want to play uh, Redick and stuff. And I'm just going off of the um, order that I have for Vegas here. But yet again, I mean, it's the same guys. But what we're going to notice, like we're seeing very much consistent, or we're seeing a lot of consistency through um, the stuff up top. But what I'm very concerned about in terms of building for this race is like, yet again, because I'm wanting to pay up so much. I don't expect to be using a lot of the eight or seven K guy drivers or thousand drivers and stuff like low eight, uh, like seven K high six K. Cause like if you're building balance, that's where you get to, if you're paying up and, and having to pay down the five K range, you're not very, uh, you're not often getting to the seven K range. Like that's a bit of a dead range, but it's even more so here. So like if we start looking at like the seven K range for this race specifically, and well, I mean, Wallace is underpriced at seven seventy five. 75, Kislowski seven, seven, Busher's 8-8, eight, eight, but, like, even Busher. Like, when we look at Busher, you know, and you look at where Busher is at here, and, you know, he ran into issues at Las Vegas. But if he runs in a situation where he qualifies, like, 14th, right? And Busher's 8, so he needs 40 points. If he qualifies, like, 12th, you know, 13th, 14th in a situation like here, then maybe Busher is a, is a bad example, but... Like, if you're qualifying here, that means, like, you just don't have the speed for the top 10. There's a real chance that, like, Busher starts 14th and finishes 12th. And this is not specifically for Busher. This is just the example I'm giving. He starts 14th, finishes 12th. That doesn't do anything for fantasy. Like, that does not do anything. Um, let's find... We'll use, like, Gregson, for example, because we kind of... We understand where um, SHR has been. Like, they have been qualifying um, in the back of the field. But, like, even last week at um or last time at texas like gregson went from 21st to 18th even despite everything like that is a horrific uh dfs day for dover specifically you know that he's, he ends up scoring you know 28 point um four or five points because he gets one fast lap in this race but he does not go up through the field at all now, granted that's texas but that's an example like if you're qualifying like the mid mid to high teens 20s mid 20s and stuff 
you're not gaining probably more than five or six positions in this race. Okay, and that's on a, that's on a, you know, that's giving quite a lot. I mean, we might have one person gain like nine positions in a race, but that might be like a actual huge miss from, you know, a top tier team having somebody qualify, you know, 17th, 16th, and they drive up to 8th and 9th or whatever in this race. It, it's very, very difficult to pass here. And if you're looking back at previous races or previous optimals and stuff, you're going to see a lot of rainouts. You're going to see COVID races and stuff like that. Since we're not having weather in the area this weekend for Dover, which is quite rare for uh, the Dover weekends, like we're going to have a starting grid that is going to be very much lined up with where people should finish and where they are in terms of speed and where they are in terms of what they should be doing here. And so especially because they're going to qualify um, Cup Series specifically. They're practicing and qualifying once rubber has already been laid down on the track, you know, from the ARCA practice, from Xfinity practice in Q. Like, this is a situation where practice data is going to be trustworthy. Just straight up, don't worry about the two different groups. Like, we're going to see who has speed. Qual qual time, quality time. Q time is going to be uh, very much trustworthy. And then we'd look at that, compare it with where they're at in these races here, and like we should be able to very easily determine where people should finish and where they shouldn't finish and stuff like that. Um, now that I mentioned that, kind of going back to the multiple laps down and stuff, that's why, depending on where we're punting down in the 5K range and where we're having to build around, like Kaz Grala, um, Justin Haley between the two Rick Rare cars, Unless they don't show speed, very real chance they both get trapped two to three laps down in this race. You know, when we look at the Collie cars who uh, were able to survive Texas and get through quite a lot of races, or quite a lot of races, quite a lot of chaos and stuff, and go from the back of the field up to 20th, that's going to make both the Collie cars look very good. Big concern here is that we don't have that type of chaos that we saw at Texas, and we don't have a lot of restarts for them to do that, and we would visualize or think that the collie cars would be the first guys to potentially lose positions or get trap laps down and stuff and so truly nailing what happens in the value range is going to be important like when we look at harrison burton for example this type of speed is going to be disastrous and it's going to be lineup killing because real chance is that you're going to be tempted to play burton here and this is just me looking on the outside looking in on uh, you know thursday at noon compared to where we might end up being or what, what we might end up uh, playing and everything. Um, give me give me a moment here. Um, don't even remember what I was talking about. Um, I think I was talking about Burton and, and his... Uh, oh, yeah, so like Burton, for example. You know, he's at 51. You know, you're going to be tempted to play him and stuff. And so, like, this is a real situation where nailing the value play that works out is going to be crucial and you can do this by two ways of one with like burton for example like this some bitch has to like pass people and actually get up through um the field um or like not even through the field he has to compete with the p he has to at least like get to like 24 25 points um and so that's either going to be held by whoever has the most speed at the bottom of the value range which right now i would lean towards gill and and LaJoy, and I know that's 55 and 56 respectively, and or paying up for the place different, not the place differential, playing up, paying up for the track position, I think is very viable this weekend for the value play. So if we get like, I mean, maybe not as disgusting as like Cinderick starting up front uh, at, uh, maybe I'm thinking of Talladega, but like he, like he started eighth at Texas and he finished 25th, like that's disastrous. But with the amount of people being lapped and, uh, the discrepancy in speed, like, if we have one of these guys start in the teens, uh, low 20s, uh, I would actually be tempted to prioritize them over the guys starting in the 30s because they have a real chance of get, being trapped, lapped down, and not being able to do anything, whereas at least the guy who is starting farther up in the value range can at least outscore them Raleigh if he can stay up there and stuff. Um, what else? What else? I gotta get back to this guy. Hold on, please. So that's for the Cup Series. I don't know. At least for I'm at, like I said, no reason for me to be here and, and, and go over. Uh, not even other, like, Pierce does a lot of good stuff, and he saves me a lot of time, but he just <laughs> very, very long-winded at point at points and times. But <clears throat> I don't know. Like, bro, Dover's a 1.5, even though it ain't, okay? 
don't don't you could use the exact same data points that use at 1.5 if we can integrate Dover with that like we have an idea of who's going to be fast who's not going to be fast it it's time to lay the wood down like it is time to lay the hammer down and just play at least for me I'm going to play aggressive for like next month and a half like this is the time of year that I'm at the 1.5s I'm going to play it using these data points and being super super aggressive and now that I took down that Xfinity tournament I'm going to 20 max every single race for the next month man so i'm i'm excited for that uh we just have to get you know practice and queue in and everything and then we can kind of talk about everything in more detail uh in terms of xfinity very same thing like if you're a slow car if you're a mid-tier pack or if you're a mid-tier car mid-tier team you're not gonna have speed man you're just not able to really do anything it's junior motorsports it is Excuse me, Joe Gibbs Racing. Like, those are the two teams we're building with and looking at for Dover in the Xfinity Series, okay? Um, other things to note, like, you know, Sam Hunt has been or had done better or had been a uh, not even anomaly and stuff, but as you, like, look back at where Sam Hunt has developed and gotten better and et cetera, yada, 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 you know, those early races to where Nemechek hopped in that 26 car or 28, whatever they were running at the time, um end up getting up through the field and up cracking off fast laps and stuff like that were were very much important to the fundamental development of that team and then we had like Casgrella and other guys who were in there who didn't able to do that but now that we got Corey Heim in there like the Sam Hunt car is very much in play when we're looking at uh salaries for the Xfinity series and hopefully uh being in the cup series does not ruin Corey Heim because this is a week that I would very much be interested in playing Corey uh, especially because Corey is at a price tag that is very affordable. He's $8,000. But we look at, you know, practically the identical pricing situation between Xfinity and Cup. Very same thing. Like, if they are not, which I'm not putting that screen off because I like just keeping some things to myself and stuff. But, like, Chandler Smith is the best car here it, in the series. And then it goes, you know, basically uh, Allgaier and then whoever's in the, you know, the MVP, uh, Joe Gibbs car and stuff. Um, but I wanted to like, just try and get in as many people as who's going to be running in the top eight as possible. The fact that Herps is still at nine, five, like that is wild. Like he's going to uh, Riley Herps should be, uh, in a good portion of my lines, just based on his price tag alone. Jesse love Sheldon Creed, Sammy Smith, like in the Xfinity series, I'm much more likely to do a two 10 K plus build with a nine K guy of either, Riley Herbs, Jesse Love, Sheldon Creed, than I am to do that type of build in the Cup Series, but that's how I want to fundamentally uh, build today. And so, like, just for example, like Chandler Smith, uh, Allgaier, we'll use Sheldon Creed here. That's six thousand dollars on average for your remaining three guys. Like everything else is just dependent on where they're at in terms of qualifying and where they are in terms of practice and stuff. But we have, you know, men's salary in Xfinity at forty nine hundred. Um, Chad Fincham. That's how you want to play. Like it's 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 one nine k guy, two ten k guy plus, and then everything else is going to be determined based on projections for those builds for the Xfinity series. Like I just, I don't know. Uh, it's not even me. Like mailing it. I I already know the way I'm attacking all these races this entire month, for uh, for the end of April and for May. Like I am, I'm locked in. I am I'm so ready. Uh, so a lot of it just depends on qualifying and the end projection that I work with. Uh, but past that, I will be live Saturday to talk about the Xfinity Series race. Uh, probably going to be early, probably during Cup Series qualifying. It actually will be during, I will be live during Cup Series qualifying at Sunday. So I will probably be live at 10 a.m. Eastern time, probably for Saturday, and then probably same time for Sunday. If you have any questions or you want to talk to me directly, you can join the discord through a link in the description below <clears throat> you can sign up with us if you want a membership of anything or you can just dm me on twitter if you have some uh quick questions or whatever uh past that i will see you guys in live shows and uh, yeah i'll see you guys this weekend bye bye